In this video, we're going to look at yet another logic problem. And in this problem, we can re-emphasize the most important technique in approaching logic problems. Namely, try simple cases to fully understand a problem. And from the simple cases, try to find a pattern and generalize it. And hopefully, from there, you see how to solve the original problem. So let's look at this video's problem. There are 27 coins. One of them is fake. The fake one is lighter than the rest, even though that every coin looks identical. Now, given the balance, you can the balance means you can put two things on the two sides of the balance. And the balance is going to tell you which side is lighter or they're the same weight. Give a balance, what is the minimal number of ways in order to figure out the fake one? So first, please allow yourself several minutes to think this problem and try to figure out yourself. Now, assume you have done that. Let's look at how we approach this. And Always, always, the way to approach this kind of question is try simple cases. Here, simple cases means that we try smaller number of coins. Instead of 27, let's try number of coins from 2, 3, 4, a bunch of those, and try to figure out if there is a pattern there in figuring out the minimum number of ways. So let's look at if there are only two coins, one of them is fake. What is the minimal number of ways, number of ways? Minimal number of ways. For two coins, it's extremely simple. You just take those two coins, put them on the two sides of the way. Let's say the two sides are left and right. You just put one there on the left, one on the right, and whichever is lighter, that's the fake one. So number of ways for two coins is extremely simple, one. How about three coins? Now, it turns out also use one, because you just pick two coins, does not really matter which two, you take two and put one on the left, one on the right, and we know out outside there's another one remaining so if the fake one is among the two which you are weighing you're going to immediately figure that out if they're the equal if they are equal then you know the outside is a fake one so for three coins you also only use one ways how about four now when you have four coins one time two way is not enough. Why? Think about it. If you're going to be using two coins on each side of the each side of the way, you put two on the left, two on the right, then immediately one side will be lighter, which that side is going to have the fake one. But by just knowing that it's not enough. You have to do another way to figure that out. So that for four, you have to do two ways to figure that out. Correct? And that seems not enough. So let's do still continue our simple cases consideration. How about five coins? How many times you need to weigh? For five coins, again I'm going to do two and a two and put one outside. Now we know that for five coins at least it will be using two ways because you have five coins more than four coins and for four coins you already use two ways so five is going to use two. And the thing is two is enough for five as well because I can put two on one side, two on the other side, have one outside. If the two are the same that means the outside one has to be fake 
and you're getting lucky, you only need to wait once. But assume the worst case is actually one side is lighter than the other, then you the fake one is in the lighter side. And for that two coins, you have to wait another once to figure it out. So for five, it's also two. How about six? Six, almost the logic is the same as five. Now you put two and two on one side of the balance to another side of the balance and now you have two left by weighing once you immediately know which two has the lighter one because if the balance is the same then the lighter one has to be outside if the balance is one is lighter than the other you know the lighter one has the fake one so you need once you're going to figure out in which two coins you have the fake one and the problem reduced to become in two coins what's the minimum number of ways you have to do which is one so for six you also need to do two twice how about seven interestingly seven you also need two and how do you do it? You again use two on one side, two one on the other side, and three outside. Now by do two one side to another side, if they're the same, then the three outside has the fake one. And for three, you know that you only need once to figure out which is the fake one, right? So if they're the same, you need another one way to figure out the fake one if they are not the same let's say one side is lighter than the other one then the fake one is in the lighter side and now you know in this two coins there's a fake one but for two coins we know there requires another way to figure out the fake one so in both cases you've only needed two ways to fake to get the fake one but there's actually for seven, there's another way of doing it. We're considering for seven coins. For seven, actually also I can do the following. I put three on the left side, three on the right side, and one outside. Now for the three and the three, if they're the same, that means the outside one has to be fake one. And if one side is lighter, the left side is lighter, the left side is lighter than the right side, then we know that the left side has the fake one so means that the fake one is among the three in the left side and for three we need another additional way to figure out which is the fake one so this is the second method i can put three three on the balance also twice why i consider the second way because that gives me the right way of doing for eight coins because now I can put three and three left with two and exactly by the same logic if the three equals three then the fake one has to be inside the two and for two I need another way so for twice I can figure out for eight coins if the balance is the same if the two sides are not the same then in here, in the three, I have the light one has the fake one. And but for three, I need another additional way to get the fake one. So for eight, it's also two. That same logic goes for nine, because now I'm making that for the nine, I'm making three piles of three coins. And I weigh one pile against the other. And there are only two cases. One, the two pi are the same. That means the fake one is outside. If one side is lighter than the other, then the light one has the fake one. And for this fake pile, I can do another way to get the fake one. So for nine, also two. Now the next key step. How about 10? How about 10? 10 
you know that if I'm making a pile of three versus three, then outside has four coins. Now for the outside four coins, we know that for the four, it requires additional two. So it does not matter what you do, the 10 is going to require a three. Because you also can weigh four against four and outside of two. But then the problem is for the four, even though you identify which four has the lighter one, but among those four, you have to do another two ways to get it. So totally you have to using three. Now we know that for 10, you need three ways. So for 27 coins, you're going to weigh at least three times. Let's also look at the pattern here. For three coins, you need one way. And then when you have one additional coin, you have to have additional way. So from four to nine, you need two ways. And for 10, you need three ways. And the question is, can you do three ways for 27 coins? And the answer is yes. If you do, to separate the 27 coins into three piles, piles of nine coins each. So pile A has nine coins. Pile B has nine coins. Pile C has nine coins. I'm going to first weigh A and B on the balance. If A equals B, that means C has the fake one. So we know the fake one is among the nine coins in C. And for nine coins, we know that we only requires two ways to figure out which one is fake. So for A equals B, we only need three ways. For A bigger than B, meaning B is lighter, then we know the B has the fake one. And because B also has nine coins, it's additional two ways, you get the fake one. So also three ways. For A less than B, of course, exactly same reasoning. So for three ways, we can figure out for 27 coins. And for all the coins between 10 to 27, it's going to be all three because the number of ways is not going to be decreasing for a smaller number of coins to a larger number of coins. So for 27 coins, we figure out it only requires three ways. And the pattern, if you are careful, from nine you need two, and then 27 you need three. Can you see the pattern here? Can you guess for 81 coins how many ways you need? How about 243 coins? The number, minimum number of ways. I hope you enjoy this class. These two questions are for you to think.